All right, guys, this is part three of how I turboed my E36. Today we're gonna to be covering the exhaust and intake. Uh, there's a lot to take in on this one, uh, mainly because it takes a lot of fabrication. Um, this is actually the funnest part for me. Uh, I'll try to keep it short, but I'm not gonna be making promises. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk exhaust. We're gonna start from the front near the engine and just work our way back. Um, so first things first is the turbo manifold. Uh, I could really make a whole video on this and I, I kind of want to in the near future. Um, but this is definitely one of the most frustrating but satisfying parts of the build. This took me about a month to do. Uh, it's, it's super time consuming, but it's something that uh, was the funnest part of the build, um, hands down. Just when you have that finished product, it's just so damn satisfying. It's definitely a blast. Um, but yeah, it, it took me about a month to do. I'm pretty sure it's just because it was my first time doing it and I was working at the same time. Um, but I feel like probably after your first one, you could probably cut that time down in half and then half after there. Um, and for the exhaust coming out of the hood, I went with like, I think it's an inch and three quarters. And I actually uh, made some pie cuts. And this one's not piping, this one's tubing. So it's just standard 16 gauge tubing that comes up and it's a small teardrop at the end. Um, which is just all pie cut. So it looks pretty cool and it comes out the top of the hood. Sick stuff. Okay, so let's talk the rest of the exhaust. Um, so everything else is just standard 16 gauge stuff, uh, 304, um, fully TIG welded and back purged. It's all three inch. I messed up because I made everything from eBay parts and the eBay stainless stuff is garbage. But yeah, uh, the three inch barely fits um, down onto the bottom of the car. Um, you like, you actually do have to like hammer the the uh, the firewall in a little bit. At least I had to, just because it is such a snug fit. It really is like fucking Tetris trying to get it out. Um, sometimes it just does not want to come out. But the downpipe was pretty fun to do. Uh, for the midpipe and the muffler, um, I reused the stock hanger locations. Um, I just ended up using half inch bar stock for the hangers. And the mid-pipe resonator, that one's just an eBay one, of course. Um, the muffler's also eBay. I actually made a previous video where, um, where I show off the sound of the car. Uh, I'll link it if you guys want to check that out and uh, really get to hear what the car sounds like. But yeah, let's move on to intake. All right, so let's talk intake. Uh, I'll try to cover everything as much as I remember at least. Um, so let's start with the piping itself. Um, see the pipe in there? Uh, that one's three inch. And on this side, near the turbo, it's two and a half inch. It didn't come out too bad, so the welds aren't too bad on this. Um, some things to note is it's two and a half on this side. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but I actually had to weld that piece on there just to get everything to kind of fit up right. Let me see when it comes out of there, it goes into this rubber piece down here. And then that kind of bends down and into the intercooler like that. Uh, the intercooler itself is also eBay. Um, I just had to make the little mounts for it on the sides there. And just bolt it up where the crash bar bolts up to. Um, I actually built the crash bar too, by the way. I don't know what you guys think about it. Um, I also had to buy like these. I think this is, I think the intercooler itself is two and a half. So I had to buy the, uh, this little adapter part to get two and a half to fit on three. Oh, another thing to note actually, uh, this big tube right here is from Rally Road. Um, another good website to sell a lot of good parts for E36s if you're gonna turbo it. Um, this is Rally Road. Um, I also have the rubber hosing that connects to the, um, the idle air control. That's all Rally Road too. Um, definitely recommend buying those parts. Because I would not trust the stock components whatsoever. They make this metal piece that'll um, just, it's just a sturdy piece that'll keep it from popping out, which is something you definitely need for, for when there's a lot of boost in there and all the pressure wants to push it out. What else? I guess we can cover the catch can. I think we might have covered this in part one. Uh, this is just a Moroso catch can, it's like just a universal piece that I picked up from Amazon um, and just connected some AN lines. This actual, this, uh, this adapter piece actually is from Rally Road as well. Um, another just really cool part, I got the 90 degree one. Um, yeah, this one's actually super close to the intake. Uh, 
yeah it's difficult to find a spot for this one but it works right there for now another thing that I really try to do um, in terms of the vacuum lines is just making sure that they're all really tight and if they don't have a worm clamp um, at least make sure that you know the connections are super snug they're not gonna pop off easily um, there's a vacuum line on the bottom on the bottom side where uh, I tapped into it to to send the line all the way over to the ECU so it can reference the boost um, just made sure that connection was super tight I guess that's just a big thing with with a turbo vehicles making sure nothing's gonna pop off uh, but you really just don't know until you drive it so one thing that I haven't done yet is test it for leaks which is something that I definitely want to do another quick tip is when making the piping uh, I would try to reduce using as many like rubber couplings as possible like I don't even like the fact that these are rubber um, honestly I want to switch them out for just straight metal um, just like a straight b-band clamp or something but I tried reducing the, the amount of couplings as much as possible I guess just one there uh, so it's one at the intake one at the intercooler another one at the intercooler and then just one right here for the 90 degree uh, elbow but I'm hoping that'll just kind of reduce the risk for for boost leaks but I think that should kind of cover everything all right guys thank you for watching I hope there was at least something useful you could take out of it that's kind of all I really care about um, I just want to make stuff that is actually useful and uh, has good information in it. So if I don't have that, um, like, feel free to let me know. And yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in part four. Take care.